airline alliances. What are they and what are the benefits? Understanding the three main airline alliances, Star Alliance, One World and Sky Team, can make a big difference to your travels. Airlines have cooperated this way for over 20 years and offer many benefits to passengers and airlines alike. This video explains the history and structure of the alliances and how they work together to offer benefits. Simply put, an airline alliance is an agreement between a number of airlines to cooperate. They work together in marketing and offering flights and connections across their networks. They also provide guaranteed benefits to connecting passengers and to each other's elite members. These airlines will offer through ticketing, connection guarantees and baggage handling. From an operational point of view, though, there's not necessarily any revenue sharing in place. That would be handled by co-chairs or joint ventures agreements and not alliance memberships. Alliances offer a win-win solution for passengers and airlines. For passengers, they open up more destinations with their choice airlines and make booking and transfers easier. There are also more ways to use reward points and elite benefits. For airlines, they allow the marketing of more destinations to more customers without the need to operate flights themselves. By combining networks, member airlines can offer flights to many more destinations than they could on their own. Let's take One World Alliance members American Airlines and Japan Airlines as an example. One booking can take a traveler from Dallas to Tokyo on American and then from Tokyo to Sapporo on Japan Airlines. This would be all on the same itinerary. Although the two flights are with two different airlines, the traveler would collect mileage on both flights and experience the same elite status benefits throughout the journey. The history of airline alliances begins in 1997 with the forming of the first, the Star Alliance. This is when five airlines were looking to expand their networks and market flights to more passengers. The One World Alliance came next in 1999 with founding members American Airlines, British Airways, Canadian Airlines, Cathay Pacific and Qantas. SkyTeam was the last to be formed in 2000, set up by Delta Airlines, Aeromexico, Air France and Korean Air. Most of the larger legacy airlines partake in alliances. Once the first airlines joined together in 1997, the benefits of an enhanced network and more passenger options appealed to most established carriers. Interestingly, there's one alliance of low-cost airlines in Asia named the Value Alliance. This offers basic connection guarantees between six airlines but no frequent flyer benefits. There are also some notable exceptions amongst the larger long-haul airlines. Two of the largest Middle Eastern airlines, Emirates and Etihad, are not alliance members, and in Europe, Virgin Atlantic stands out for going solo as well. Some of these airlines have formed close partnerships with other airlines, but not as formalized as alliance memberships. Emirates has a similar relationship with nine other airlines through its loyalty program. This includes a partnership with European low-cost airline EasyJet, which allows mileage redemption for its flights. To make things more complicated, airlines within an alliance may choose to work even closer together through code share or joint ventures. This is, of course, equally possible by airlines. Joint ventures and code shares offer close cooperation but do not necessarily provide the same alliance benefits for mileage and frequent flyers. A joint venture is an agreement between airlines to share revenues on a route and to coordinate together on route planning and scheduling. Code shares are much less committed and involve airlines placing their codes on each other's flights to increase flight options for passengers. All passengers benefit in several ways from alliances, but for frequent flyers and members of airline loyalty schemes, there are even more advantages. Some benefits include easier ticket booking, simplified check-in and baggage handling, the ability to earn and redeem miles on other alliance members, reciprocal frequent flyer benefits between member airlines. This can include additional luggage allowance, waived fees and priority airport check-in and boarding, and access to airline lounges. Let's look at the three main alliances. The Star Alliance is the largest alliance today by both the number of airlines and passenger volume. Its 26 airlines cover every continent and it probably offers the lowest gaps of any of the alliances. It covers China well with two Chinese airlines and has several African members. There's also one major South American airline. In a 2019 analysis, Simple Flying reported Star Alliance significantly ahead in terms of total passenger revenues. It's also the most connected, covering 195 countries. It was the first alliance to be formed in May 1997 
as a global collaboration between United Airlines, Air Canada, Scandinavian Airlines, Lufthansa, and Thai Airways. It adopted the slogan, The Airline Network for Earth. The alliance focused on expanding its global coverage, adding Brazilian airline Varig later in 1997 and Ansett Australia and Air New Zealand in 1999. The Japanese airline ANA expanded the alliance's Asia network when it joined in 1999. The expansion has continued up to the 26 members it has today. Notable previous members include British Midland, Brazilian airline TAM, Mexicana, and Adria Airways. In addition to the 26 main member airlines, there are around 40 affiliate members. These are linked, often subsidiary airlines, and offer similar benefits. As far as future plans are concerned, there are currently no planned new entrants to the Star Alliance. Some reporting by Aero Telegraph recently indicated that Vietnam's Bamboo Airways may be considering membership, but this is not confirmed. The One World Alliance is the smallest of the three in terms of traffic, but it has an excellent membership of top-rated airlines. It offers decent global coverage, but with a notable gap in China, where it provides many Hong Kong connections with Cathay Pacific, but lacks a Chinese airline member. It also has gaps in much of Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as South America, due to its recent loss of LATAM as a member. The alliance was formed in 1999 by American Airlines, British Airways, Canadian Airlines, Cathay Pacific, and Qantas. Canadian Airlines left soon after joining when it merged with Air Canada. Finn Air was the first recruit and was closely followed by Iberia and then Lan Chile. The early 2000s saw Japan Airlines, Royal Jordanian, and Hungarian carrier Malev join. It has grown to 13 members today. Several airlines have joined and left along the way, including Mexicana and Air Berlin. The latest addition is Royal Air Morocco, which joined in April 2020, adding several new African destinations to the network. In May 2020, it lost LATAM as a member. LATAM is the largest airline in South America and was an important part of One World. Its departure leaves the alliance with no member in South America. In addition to its 13 main members, there are around 30 affiliate members. These are usually regional airlines owned or with strong links to the members. For example, American Eagle is an affiliate member under American Airlines, and British Airways has affiliates BA City Flyer, Sun Air, and Comair. One World also operates a membership known as One World Connect. This offers select connection and elite status benefits, but not the full range and guarantee of alliance benefits. It allows smaller airlines to join without the cost of full membership. Currently, Fiji Airways is the only One World Connect member. Looking to the future, Alaska Airlines is scheduled to join by the summer of 2021. This will make One World the only alliance to currently have two US-based members. Following the loss of LATAM in 2020, One World will also likely try to add another South American member soon. One key prospect is Brazilian airline Gol, which already has a close relationship with American Airlines. SkyTeam is the youngest alliance, founded in 2000. It does, in fact, have the highest passenger volume, with most recent figures stating 730 million passengers a year, compared to 728 million for Star Alliance and 528 million for One World. Its 20 airlines offer good global coverage, however, it is somewhat weak in Oceania and South America. Like the other alliances, it has leading members in the US, Europe, and Asia. Many of its other members are smaller airlines, perhaps less global than most One World members, for example. SkyTeam Alliance was formed in 2000 by founding members Delta Airlines, Aero Mexico, Air France, and Korean Air. It was also the only alliance to also establish a separate alliance for cargo operations, SkyTeam Cargo. SkyTeam was slower to expand than other alliances. While it had European carriers Czech Airlines and Alitalia, its next major expansion came in 2004 with Aeroflot, China Southern, Continental Airlines, KLM, and Northwest Airlines. It has now grown to 19 members. In its history, Continental and Northwest were lost to mergers, and China Southern left the alliance in 2018. Spanish airline Air Europa will leave the alliance after its purchase by International Airlines Group in 2019. It's not clear yet when this will happen, or whether Air Europa will join the One World Alliance. 
One of the most significant weaknesses of Sky Team is its lack of coverage in certain areas. Hopefully, this will improve from 2020 with Delta's stake in LATAM, the largest airline in South America, although there are no concrete plans for LATAM to join Sky Team. Unfortunately, there are fewer options to offer coverage in the Pacific. The Value Alliance, a low-cost alliance. Worthy of a mention here is the Value Alliance. This is the first alliance to be created between low-cost airlines and was formed in May 2016. As of June 2020, it has six members. There are many low-cost airlines in Asia, and some sort of alliance bringing them together makes sense. This is a basic alliance, though, offering interline flights but little else. There are no tiers, frequent flyer benefits, or combined mileage programs. Passengers looking through the Value Alliance website will benefit from a connection guarantee and free rebooking in case of delays. They'll still receive separate tickets for each flight and check-in with each airline. This is very much a marketing and sales alliance rather than one which provides the levels of airline cooperation and benefits seen with the big three alliances. So what about other alliances? While there is no other formalized alliance yet, a few of the unaffiliated airlines have made strong moves to form their own networks of airlines, offering various options for flight connections and shared mileage earning and redeeming. Virgin Atlantic, Emirates and Etihad are the most notable in this area, and one or more of these may go further to introduce a new alliance. There was also discussion in 2018 of Qatar Airways leaving One World to start its own alliance based on its equity investments. Overall, there's been little major change to airline alliances since they developed in the early 2000s. Many more airlines have joined and some have left, but their basic functions have remained the same. However, we do see a few recent trends that may affect them going forward. The rise in low-cost and budget airlines will give passengers more choice over airlines. They offer point-to-point -point fares but few frequent flyer benefits. This gives passengers more options than just sticking to a preferred alliance and this will likely increase. We also anticipate an increase in joint venture and co-chair operations, with more and more airlines looking at opportunities to cooperate this way. What are your thoughts about airline alliances? Do you have a preferred alliance? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.